and welcome to the Office of Image Archaeology in this third episode of the YouTube video series Sacramento Time Traveler. I am George Myhall, your host. A few years ago I picked this photograph up and it's uh, one that's in pretty bad condition. Um, it's covered with fly specks and, and what may be blood. This is from a meat market so uh, there were butchering critters in there and so I suspect that that's probably blood on there. At any rate, um, it's been folded and it has a crease in it and um, and it's just in really raw condition. Um, I feel kind of guilty. I posted this to a Facebook page called Sacramento History. I, I recently joined that page because um, I have a lot of really cool Sacramento stuff and I wanted some place to share photographs. I share film on and some photographs on YouTube, but I, I'm going to digitally repair this photograph while we talk about the history of this uh, this photograph and basically about uh, digitizing and photo repair in general. Uh, you can see here what I'm doing is, is I'm actually uh, borrowing color or, or copying color from different locations in, in the image and that'll be the cursor you see blinking on and off and then the circle is where I'm laying that new color down. And here I'm going to crop the picture because there's no sense in me repairing that border because that uh, I can create a new flawless border and I don't have to spend any time doing it or any real time doing it. And the object here is is to remove as many flaws as possible. Of course I'll always keep the digital copy of the original in case I make a mistake and I've gone ahead and, and taken something out that shouldn't be taken out but I rarely, rarely do that, um, and if I do, it's something like a blade of grass or a leaf a tree, leaf off of a tree, <laughs> or you know something like that. Again, uh, you look at the cursor, and the cursor is the sample that I'm I'm using, and then the circle is where the I'm um, laying that sample down. If if you've ever colored in a coloring book, or you you enjoyed painting. Uh, as a child or even as an adult. This is much like that. Uh, there's a certain uh, a certain aspect to it. It's, it's kind of soothing in a way. Um, I mean the only part that I'm using, uh, the, only, the only parts of my body I'm using is, is my butt to sit down, my eyeballs to look at it, and then um, of course that right hand um, uh, gets a little work uh, working the mouse button and every time you see that click or that 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 uh, flash of that cursor that's me clicking the mouse the mouse button the left mouse button uh, and so you do that a lot and if you haven't got carp and tunnel uh, disease uh, when you've done one of these you're a superman that's all I got to say <laughs> um, well not to say I'm not a superman but hey uh, I do work my tail off on this stuff as far as that goes. Mostly what I'm really interested in here, and you can see it, uh, as I go through this, I'll, I'll change like now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start working down on the bottom area uh, because that's a lighter color than the top and I want to, when they merge, I want to blend the two together. I don't want to use all of one color because it starts out light on the bottom and it gradually uh, increases in, in um, uh, darkness as you go up. Uh, it's not real obvious to see here, but it is. But that's what's happening. And so, th in this way right here, I can actually blend the two so that it's not obvious that that's what's happened. And I use a soft, soft brush and a hard brush. A soft brush will blend two, two different things together. Um, sometimes by accident. Uh, other than that, you're blending. Like if you have straight edges like that roof line and uh, so, some of the other places, you want to use a hard edge. To where you're you're not going to you know, blend the roof with the, the background sky and you can see that crease going through there that's through the meat market sign at the top that goes all the way down to the bottom it goes through a horse's leg and unfortunately i don't think i actually recorded me repairing the horse's leg uh, but what i did was uh, it may have been it, i may have recorded it but I, I don't think so but if i did okay so you'll understand what you're seeing if uh, if i didn't then i'm going to tell you what i did was um, I made another copy, or I, I laid down another copy of this, and the right leg is the good leg. I cut that out, and then I reversed it, and then I applied it over the spot where the old leg, where the damaged leg is at, and then I blended the two together. And um, because I've told you this, you'll be looking for it, but uh, if I hadn't told you, you would never know. 
it would it just looks like part of the image i had to do that with with one of the letters on the sign in front of the building where it says a b lichens i will mark it the a was, it was just too light in order to make those you'll see here how i'm repairing this the sign here the crease goes right through the sign what i'm doing is i took the a and the meat and i copied that and i put it in the a over the a in the market so i repli pretty much replaced the a that was in market with the meat a that doesn't have any flaws too hard to try and create uh, the same uh, letter styles and the same angles and all this kind of stuff i'm horrible at drawing i can copy all day long but i can't uh, i can't draw worth nothing but uh, you can see here and then there's a little bit of a, a whoopee at the top on that uh, the frame of that uh, sign uh, and I created that I didn't line up properly when I tried to uh, when I placed the, the uh, digital sample of the other straight part uh, I didn't do it in the right right spot so um, I'll come back in a minute and I'll fix that and you want to preserve as much detail as possible. So I'm down to, in some cases here, I'm down to the, the single pixel level. I'm picking out, you know, and, and repairing, you know, pixel by pixel. Um, so you, you try not to destroy any detail at all because people are going to be interested in the type of architecture used here, you know, how decorative it was and, and this sort of thing. It's not always just about uh, what's written on the uh, back of a photograph or something like that or the year that it was created or who was in it or what the subject matter is it's about the some you know the small details those little things that people look at to uh, compare to something that may exist even today or they're trying to copy or trying to recreate or something so you want to make sure that you don't destroy any of those details i mentioned earlier that this is something that i had posted to a facebook account called sacramento history and i got to tell you if you care much about your city and you should you live here but if you care uh, to know about the, some of the details of your city go to Facebook if you're on Facebook I realize that Facebook can be controversial sometimes but this uh, particular Facebook page there is no politics it's just uh, strictly about Sacramento history and I've been posting stuff there for about two or three weeks now and um, I've been introduced to a lot of really cool people so if you're interested in the city that you live in and you, know, you should be um, you're interested in the history of Sacramento. Uh, the Sacramento history page is a, an excellent place to learn more. It's all in the details. And uh, speaking of details, the details and stuff that are in, like this sign right here, uh, small stuff. I said uh, I'm going down to the pixel by pixel level to replace some of the color to get rid of the flaws and the, the fly specs, feces, throw up, whatever that happens to be. I'm trying to get rid of that as much as possible without destroying any of the other detail and trying to bring out some of the detail like uh, that sign that, you know, this, this sign that I'm working on right now at the top there, I'm trying to get rid of that little whoopee I put in there. I use a much larger brush and then I hit the wrong button. Let's go back. Okay, there I am. Um, I use a much larger brush when it comes to the sky area or the background. In this case, it's it's all one color there's you know I mean there's a variation but basically it's all one color so uh, here I'm taking and you can see there's a variation from the left to the right um, by just a few degrees uh, of shade and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this lighter color here like I did the darker color on the other side and then I'll blend the two together to make it so that it's you know you don't even know it's happened but uh, let's get to uh, actually what we're looking at here and this is a meat market in Oak Park California on the back of the photograph was made in 1894 and it has uh, four names on it uh, a gentleman named Emil a yeah, it's spelled E-M-I-L uh, Levine uh, last name is spelled L-E-V-I-N-E, -E, a guy named Henry Davis, uh, the uh, owner of the shop, Anderson B. Likens. Likens is spelled L-I-K-E-N-S, B as in boy, the middle initial, and then Ben Beck, B-E-C-K. Those are the four names on the back of the uh, photograph, and like I said, it's uh, been dated as being 1894 Oak Park. There are some kind folks over at the Sacramento History Channel on Facebook that have done a lot of research on this photograph in just a couple of days, and they've come up with a lot of information that I hadn't. My primary function 
As a matter of fact, this is why I call it Office of Image Archaeology, but my primary function is I, I search this stuff out. Uh, like an archaeologist would dig for a bone, I dig for photographs, film, negatives, and documents uh, so that I can preserve them for the future, digitize them, and uh, put them on a hard drive so that somebody in the future has access to them and um, they're not completely lost. At least, that's my hope. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to be doing on Sunday. I'll be at Alameda, California at the Antique Fair. That thing is huge. It takes hours to walk from one end to the other, and I always come back with something interesting. My primary purpose this trip is looking for Sacramento vicinity related items, uh, antique stuff, and um, you know, paper, uh, photographs, film, negatives, that sort of thing. That's the primary reason. The secondary reason, of course, is, and that's uh, this is a given, <laughs> every time I go out I'm looking for film, motion, pi motion picture film, so that's uh, what I'm going to be doing on Sunday. Um, meanwhile, getting back to this uh, particular photograph here, let me see if I can pull up, I've got uh, something, some information here. This is the Iowa Market, uh, and it was located at 3514 Magnolia Avenue in Oak Park, California, or as it is known today, 2nd Avenue. So that would be 3514 2nd Avenue. Um, uh, the gentleman that owned it, in a, or well, hello, let me go ahead and give you back to... Uh, the name on the building is Anderson, or A. B. Likens, but that uh, is Anderson B. Likens. He was born in 1861 in Iowa. He moved to California, and there's some record of him living in Eureka, California in 1887, but he was found to be living in Sacramento in 1891, and later, according to the, the 1900 census, he was living in Brighton. Today, there is no Brighton Township, only a street named Brighton Avenue. It was once located between 65th Street and Howe Avenue, just west of Folsom Boulevard. Also, uh, to note, uh, he was a butcher at, in Perkins uh, in 1899. Perkins was just across uh, the Southern Pacific Tracks, about a mile east of Brighton. Um, and neither one of those locations has um, anything but street names these days. Uh, at the same shop, uh, uh, at that same shop in 1903, a uh, drunk had entered the establishment one day and demanded that he be served before others that had already been waiting before he arrived. And an argument ensued, and the drunken man pulled out a revolver. Likens drew his own gun and fired several shots that missed the would-be assailant. Later, the man was found in a nearby field and arrested. It appears the late 1800s and early 1900s were not a very safe time to live in California. Either that or Likens was just not very lucky because in 1995 the man was at a place called the Old Rooney Ranch. And uh, I looked that up. It looks like it's near Livermore, California. And uh, he was robbed of his horse and a pony. Uh, there's a 1900 photograph that can be found uh, on the Facebook uh, Sacramento History uh, page. Uh, somebody posted it uh, below my original photograph I posted on there and it has it's a 1900 photograph that says uh, it's the same market um, and uh, address uh, but uh, this the proprietor at this time according to the photograph is a gentleman named Henry Davis so I'm not sure about the time frame and all this. There's also a record of A.B. Likens being married in Kirkwood, I'm assuming that's Kirkwood, California, and another that told of him losing his assets in a foreclosure sale the next year. Well, I've got about six or seven hours wrapped up into digitally repairing this photograph, and I certainly don't expect you folks to stick around for that long. That'd be pretty painful. I'm going to speed this up about 600%, and we'll get to the end of it pretty quickly, and you can see what the results are, and, and I think you'll be uh, as satisfied uh, as I was with the results. It turned out pretty nice. Just a quick heads up, the next two episodes are going to be pretty exciting. The uh, first one is going to be, actually next week, is going to be about the uh, California State Capitol in Sacramento. And I've got film and photographs going back over the last hundred years about. Next week's we'll carry on into the following week with the Sacramento Northern Railroad, which was uh, uh, the uh, public transit system for Sacramento for many years. But uh, I've got some interesting film on that. So you know keep a lookout for the next two episodes i think you'll really enjoy those so i just want to thank you folks for allowing me to share with you this third episode of the sacramento time traveler brought to you by the office of image archaeology if you like doing your own research 
don't forget to subscribe to the Patreon channel so that uh, you have access to those high definition photographs and film that I use to create these videos. Also remember to subscribe and click that notification bell so that you won't miss the next episode. Have a great day and I'll see you soon on Sacramento Time Traveler. Mm -hmm.